Got a groovy song for you now, people. It's called...
Contemplating this war on drugs, and you think about it, and you know, I mean, like most things in this world, Buzz, you know, it's like what you know sometimes and what you don't know can hurt you, you know? When we're living in this world here, you know, where it's profits over people instead of people over profits, you know? Human resources. Good Lord. Buzz is zipwhack, I gotta tell you. People, welcome once again to the program we totally enjoy. Call Stop Your Bitching. Start a revolution. That's right, people. You are with the Department of Freedom, <laughs> Institute of Higher Learning, people. And here we are, <laughs> hanging out in our prison costumes. You know why. I'll tell you why, people, because it's one nation under surveillance. We're living in a police state. That's right. This war on drugs has done nothing but use the ignorant in this society to make laws to create what? This new world order that we're contending with, Buzzy. Freedom's out the window, people. That's why we're sitting here in our prison suits. Tyrannical police state. That's what we're talking about, folks. We got a lot to cover. We're going to be talking like we're on cocaine because we got a lot to cover. Well, Buzzy, you know, let's talk about this war on drugs. Good old Tricky Dick, you know, back there in the day. Didn't get that name for nothing now, did he? You know, he declares a war on drugs in 1971. That's all good old President Nixon, you know? And what's going on back there? The Vietnam War. And we know, people, we've been telling you, we've been showing you that the CIA, through the Mena Connection, is the Cocaine Heroin Import Agency. Yes, indeed, folks, that's right. Ho, ho, ho! Buzz, you know, I've been wanting to talk to folks out there in TV land for some time now about our friend, Mr. Michael Levine. But before we get... Hey, folks, forgot to say something. Buzzy, it's always good to be here on the program with you. This is my good man, Buzzy Zipwack, you know? We got our good friends in the studio, Ricky Monroe and Chief Footnote, <laughs> also known as Sean Coulter, helping us out here in the studio. We are grateful to be here in Nutmeg Studio in our little prison cell. Now, Buzzy, I am serious. I think you know that by now. But anyway, Mr. Michael Levine, expert witness, worked for the DEA for 25 years. You know what I'm talking about? This man, when the war on drugs got called, people, where was he? But he was one of the first men to go outside of this country in deep undercover into Thailand, looking for where the source of these drugs coming into this country. And you know what he said, folks? The first time I ran into the CIA and other influences in this war on drugs was an undercover case I did in Bangkok, Thailand, 1971. That's right, people. 
I successfully conned the hell out of Chinese drug dealers who are also the source of an investigation on a case titled the William Henry Jackson Organization. In essence, what the man is saying, a bunch of GIs in Vietnam were buying heroin in Thailand and putting in heroin, all right, people, in dead bodies of GIs killed in Vietnam and putting in the body bag and bringing it home. And this is the beginning of big trouble in this country and heroin coming in pure forms than it ever was. Now, Buzzy, got some quotes on the uh, next page. Just so people don't think that we're talking about a movie, Air America, because that's what some people might think all oh, this story came from that. You know, just to throw out that little bit. That, well, we you know, showed the people. Oh, yeah. For the past two weeks, I hope you were with us, people. The main connection, you know, what Bill Clinton was up to when he was governor in Arkansas, you know. Whoa, -ho! bringing in the cocaine, the supply for the Contras, whoa. -ho! Well, I'm just trying to, you know, point out, don't mix fiction with fact. Don't, don't think that we're mixing the two of them up. You know, most fictional stories der are derived from fact. Come on, folks. So, Let's hear it is right here. Mind. 1982. This is what the man, Michael Levine, says. Two million dollars in taxpayers' funds were transferred in an agency under the Central Intelligence Agency's uh, account. And the funds were then covertly used and dedicated by dedicated officials in high office for a contract to purchase, manufacture, and import 500 tons of cocaine between 1982 and 1987 with national security as cover folks for this all right in order to what secretly finance anti-communist military operations in third world countries that cocaine people it flooded all right the inner cities of the united states became the crack cocaine epidemic how many people out you know out there you know got affected by that i know that it took people out and it ain't on a date is what i'm talking about the united states foreign intelligence needs create uh, to create a generation of drug users. That's what they're, I'm trying to say here, folks. The intelligence agency created through this, all right, a generation of drug users and the largest prison population in the world to save the world from communism. I'm telling you, folks, this is unfortunately a true story, all right, with Sorry. live eyewitnesses and, and documented evidence written in Oliver North's personal diary, which contained psh, hundreds, 584, in fact, all right, entries concerning cocaine importation. Supposedly, man, what does uh, Mr. Levine else, what else does he have to say there? We gotta get moving here, we got lots to cover. Yeah, he also goes on to say that he's put away thousands of people for tens of thousands of years in prison compared to against like Oliver North and CIA people that had far more evidence than what uh, these people are in prison for. He also says that he was in deep cover and he got close to the drug world in three countries and as he got closer, the CIA killed it. That's it. But bottom line, people, what he's asking is, is, is it possible that the U.S. government wants to keep addictive drugs, all right, illegal, so that the street prices remain high so as to maximize the profits for their covert operations, folks? That's what's going on. It's profits over people, and until we have people over profits, there's going to be no value in human dignity, and that's where we're at right now, folks. So, Buzzy, my man. Folks, you know, the past two seasons we've been on this program, we've been asking you, are you a guinea pig? You know, we showed you, you know, fluoridation of the water, its connection to pan-Germanism. We showed you the Georgia Guidestones and the population reduction agenda and on and on and on. And what's going on in this country? The dumbing down of this country is continuing. So what we're talking about, folks, are cops your friends? That's what we're going to be asking you throughout this season. Can they be your friends if the federal government is bringing in the drugs? All right. And come on, the cops take an oath to uphold the Constitution, to protect us from enemies within and without. And if they're not going after the enemies within, the Barry Seals, come on, before Barry Seal got to testify, they whacked him off. You know, they killed him. You know, and uh, when, George, when George Bush was president, when Bill Clinton was the governor in, in Arkansas, what happened when Bill becomes president? Oklahoma City bombing, Federal Murray building, and guess what? That's where all the documents on the main connection were. And what happens now? Where is he now? He's working for the friggin' UN in Haiti, you know, trying to rebuild their economy down there, while ours is just doing what? Crap in the bed, and you know it. 